Welcome to the explainer video for your eLearnTronics Electronics Learning Board Resistance Board. Now, you should have at this point a completed and soldered resistance learning board. If you haven't completed this yet, you should go and watch that video and go ahead and solder up your board. Now, if you haven't yet, go ahead and plug in your 9 volt battery and flip on the switch. And you should notice something very quickly. The LED on the left side of the board will be very brightly lit, whereas as you move along to the right, they will get dimmer and dimmer until you can just barely see any light even coming out of this uh, LED all the way on the right marked 47K. So what we're going to figure out is why is that happening? And to start, we're going to talk about what exactly is resistance? Well, to understand resistance, we have to think about the current or electricity as it flows through a circuit. If we have, for simplicity's sake, a positive side and a negative side, so say the two terminals of a battery, and we just connect them, well, current is going to flow through there so incredibly fast that whatever it's flowing through is just going to heat up and potentially explode. Not a good thing. Now that won't actually happen because every single thing on the planet has some level of resistance. There's nothing outside of a lab that really truly has zero resistance. But what we can do is we can place a resistor, and this is the schematic symbol for a resistor, in the line, and we measure that in ohms, so we could say a 100 ohm resistor. And what that's going to do is literally resist the electricity. It just makes it a little bit harder for the current to go through the circuit. And it's incredibly important. And that's what we're going to talk about. Now we measure resistance in ohms. Okay, uh, that is named after a, and I wrote it down because of course I would forget this, the German physicist George Simon Ohm. It's spelled O-H-M but we commonly use the uh, Greek symbol and we draw it well so that we know what we're talking about. This is a symbol, anytime you see that, that means ohms. Now you'll also, some, so you might see 330 ohms. Some people might write 330R because that's easier to find on an American keyboard. Uh, if it's in the thousands, then you'll see uh, you know, 1.4 K. If it's in the millions of ohms, which you'll rarely deal with, but you might, then you might see 1 M. That's equivalent to 1 million ohms. Okay? So now that we understand what we're talking about when we say an ohm, uh, how do we work with it? Well, to, to really understand uh, resistance, we need to understand something called Ohm's Law, which is, as you might have guessed, something discovered by Ohm. Now, Ohm's Law is going to be I equals V over R. In this case, I is current, V is voltage, And R, as you might have guessed, is resistance. Now this is a very important law. It means that the current that flows through a circuit will be a proportion of its voltage to its resistance. So if we have a 10 volt power source going through a 10 ohm resistor, to a zero volt, or what would commonly be referred to as ground source, well, we can take the current that flows through that is going to be 10 volts divided by 10 ohms will give us one amp. Okay, now if this were 100 ohms, then it would be 10 divided by 100 which would give us 0.1 amps or 100 milliamps. So we can use this equation to understand what current is going to flow through our circuit. 
But we don't just need this equation. We can actually rewrite the equation. We can also find a resistance value by putting on our voltage and our desired current. Or we can find the voltage that we need by putting in the current that we want, dividing it by the resistance. This is all very helpful. So, in our case, with our learning board, we are powering several different resistors, or several different LEDs, all with a different resistance. We've got 330 ohms, 470 ohms, 1000 ohms, 2.2K, 4.7K, 10K, 22K, and 47K. And you'll notice underneath each of those is written 20.6 milliamps, 14.5 milliamps, 6.8 milliamps, 3.09 milliamps, all the way up to the 47K resistor gives us 0 0.14 milliamps. Well, how do we calculate that? It gets a smidge tricky because we have an LED in there. So I'm gonna go over real quick how an LED works and how we calculate this value when we're dealing with an LED. So what we want to figure out uh, is the current that's going to flow through. So we might say we have a nine volt battery divided by 330 ohms, which is going to give us, well, the board says 20.6 milliamps. But if you actually work that out, that's not correct. That math isn't right. And that's because our circuit looks something like this. We have our nine volt power source, which goes through a resistor of 330 ohms, then through an LED, and to our, well, negative or ground. So we have nine volts flowing through here, but the LED causes a drop in voltage. And if you look on the back of your board, it actually explains this. We take our source voltage, nine volts, nine volts, minus the forward voltage of the LED. Now with these LEDs, I can tell you it's 2.2 volts. Many LEDs are different. Uh, there are some standardized values, but you'll need to really look at who manufactured your LED to figure out what that value is going to be. So we'll take 9 volts minus 2.2 volts and then divide by our, well, let's, uh, let's use a round number, our 1,000 ohm. I could have written that 1K, but for simplicity's sake, we'll do that. Okay, we're trying to find the current that's going to flow through this. 9 volts minus 2.2 volts will give us 6.8 volts divided by 1 kilo ohm, which will give us 6.8 milliamps. So you can go through, you can check the math on each of these, and you can figure out what the voltage or what the current is going to be. But let's take a step back. Let's go back in time to when to when me, Paul, when Paul was designing these circuit boards. And I knew that, well, for the lowest value resistor, I want about 20 milliamps because these LEDs are intended to be driven at about 20 milliamps of current. Well, so I need to find the resistance. So I can plug in resistance is equal to voltage over current, right? Our resistance is equal to, well, our voltage, we know is nine volts minus the volt forward voltage, which gives us 6.8 divided by our current is going to be 20 milliamps, which will be 0 0.02. Now, let's see if I've actually written this down. Yep. So that's going to give us about 340 ohms. But Paul, this is 330 ohms. Are you an idiot? Well, yes, but not in this case. What we want, what we're going to do is theoretically, we want 340 ohms. Unless you order specially, you're not going to find a 340 ohm resistor very commonly, 
but 330 ohm resistors are pretty common. So I plugged in the math and figured out that, well, 330 ohms is gonna give me uh, 20.6 amps or milliamps. I'm comfortable with that, but the general rule of thumb is you're going to figure out your theoretical resistor value and then go up to the next common resistor. So we could have gone from there to say a 470 ohm resistor and still been pretty okay. If you look at these left two LEDs on your board, they're pretty similar. So just to be safe, so that we don't have more current flowing through than we desire, you're gonna take your theoretical value and go up to the next value resistor that you have. Now I won't get too into series resistors versus parallel resistors because there's an entire other video on that. It's the series versus parallel video. Uh, but let's say you needed a, oh, what's a good value? Well, we'll just add two of these, an 800 ohm resistor. And you say, well, I don't have one of those, but I've got a 330 ohm resistor and a 470 ohm resistor. Well, if you really need it to be just 800, then you can actually put those in series, not in parallel. They need to go one after the other. And this system will give you total 800 ohms of resistance. It's very uncommon that you would really have to do this until you get into higher level electronics, but it's just something that you should know. Okay, so we've got, this is a very basic example, but it really demonstrates how important uh, understanding Ohm's law is. Okay, again, it's going to be I equals V over R. If you can memorize that, I'd say it's worth it. And then if you do a little bit of algebra, if you don't know algebra yet, that's okay. You can just write this stuff down. But if you do a little bit of algebra, then you can get the values that you need. So you've got, uh, you know, R equals V over I. I don't need to write these out again. So Ohm's law is very important. You're going to use it frequently to figure out either the proper resistor to use, to figure out the proper voltage to use, which admittedly is less common because usually you have a fixed voltage, uh, or you can figure out uh, how much current is going to flow a through a given system. You can look at a system, calculate, well, 400 milliamps is gonna flow through this, but then that's too much for this, uh, this component, so I need to add additional resistance. It's, it's going to end up being a very helpful law to understand. And I will leave you with a pretty helpful little uh, chart. Uh, if you have a chart, you should always keep this on hand. I keep several of them by my workbench. Uh, if you don't have one, you can find them online. And this is going to teach you how to actually figure out the value of a resistor. So pulling out our resistor board again. Our very left leftmost resistor, 330 is orange, orange, brown. Orange, orange, brown, and then actually gold. Okay, so we've got four bands. We're going to look at the four band code. The first band is orange, and we drop down here to the orange row, and that corresponds to a three. Our second value is a three, because it's orange. Then we have brown. Well, for our four band resistors, we jump over here to multiplier. Brown is 10 ohms. And then gold is our tolerance, and that's plus or minus 5%. That doesn't really matter right now, but I'll explain what that is. Uh, so the way we do this, we take our first two bands, three, three, that's 33. You multiply them by your third band, which is 10 ohms. And that gives us the resistor value, which is 330 ohms. Now the tolerance means that this resistor, according to the manufacturer, will be within plus or minus 5%. That's not super tight tolerance, but for our purposes, it's really enough. So what that means is the value is going to be 330, between 330 
plus, uh, what would that be, 16.5 ohms, and 330 minus 16.5 ohms, which is going to give us, um, what did that give you? I'm struggling with math right now. 313.5 to 346.5. So that's kind of a wide range. Uh, if you're ever doing work on components that need a very tight uh, band for resistance, then you can get into these some of these that are plus or minus 1%, plus or minus 0 0.0, or yeah, 0.05%. You can get really, really precise with the resistors. Uh, anything you buy at a hobby shop, though, is probably going to be either gold, 5%, or even silver, which is 10%, but you're probably okay. If you're working with something sensitive, you just need to make sure that it can handle the resistance on the lowest end. Okay, so there you have it. It's a, it's a bit of a basic tutorial. If you're already in electronics, you probably didn't learn a whole lot, but it's just a great reminder that Ohm's Law is always something that you should know. If you forget what it is, uh, just grab your resistance board. It's right here, so you'll never, ever forget it. If you have any questions, you can reach out to me. My email address, let me throw it up here, is tron at elearntronics. Dot com. And that's also the website. If you want to get instructions, uh, see some of the other boards, see what we're up to, go ahead and head over to elearntronics.com. Uh, thank you for watching this. Uh, definitely recommend checking out the other boards. And if you, again, if you have any questions, I can't guarantee that I have an answer, but I can guarantee that I'll try to find one. So thanks for watching. I'm Paul, and have a great day.